Hey guys, it's uh, Dr. Mankowski. Um, here to field some questions if you have any. Um, just type down your questions and I'll, I'll try to do my best to get, get you some answers. And we're here at Mount Laurel Animal Hospital. I'm here right now in 24 hour emergency hospital and primary care specialty hospital. We also have a mobile service, and we see all sorts of animals. Almost anything that can walk through the door, we will see here at the hospital. We see a ton of exotic pets and dogs and cats. Yes, join me, my good friend. Can you see me? I only see your... My headshot. Oh, wait, hold on. There we yeah. go. There. There you are. Hello, sir. How's it going? Hey, good. How are you? You know, good to see you as always. Uh, I guess you haven't aged again, so I guess you got that memo. I just need to know what water fountain you're drinking from. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> look great, too, my friend. <laughs> so, so um, I got to congratulate Mount Laurel Animal Hospital. Look, you guys got are, are killing it in this space here in TikTok. That's awesome. Oh, that's our marketing team. Doing yeah. That. Yeah. Um, I know you're a pro at this live stuff. So uh, this is new to me. <laughs> I can tell. Sit back, relax, Dr. Minkowski. It's a lot of fun. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you last night. You were on Instagram live and you had a bit, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in, of course. So um, hi, Katie. I see you. You have a pet here at, as a patient at our hospital. Uh, welcome. Awesome. So I want to give everybody a shout out that's tuning in too. I know I'm your guest, but it's my turn just to give you, just give me 30 seconds to tell you how amazing Mount Laurel Animal Hospital is, everybody. So I have been friends with this man for over 25 years. Not only is he an incredible human being, friend, brother from another mo mother, the hospital and the team there are exceptional, everyone. And so sometimes you'll see me occasionally Mary Poppins it and fill in every now and then a <laughs> shift there. But you know, just coming from what I do and here at DVM360, when I talk about teamwork and just for the greater good of the animals and community, I think about Laurel Animal Hospital. So I really uh, can't thank you all enough for what you do for my fur babies and for the community. So you guys do a fantastic job. I appreciate that, Adam. And and you're doing a great job. You, you work with different conferences throughout the, uh, throughout the country and... Um, you know, still seeing some patients here and there, but you're doing yeah. so, so much good for the veterinary community. It really is. I mean, it's collaboration like this that uh, that truly makes us love what we do every day in this space. So, um, you know, so I know Mount Laurel Animal Hospital, you guys are going to be there um, at the Atlantic Coast Veterinary Conference next month. So Chris, I think that's awesome. One of our employees is, is uh, popped on. And who else do we have here? scroll up here katie higgins yeah mount laura has always treated us so well and is great with our anxious pity that's so nice to hear caitlin so Thank so you. dr dr mikowski let me ask you this then so um I, i'm sure do you have any questions by the way any i have a question i have a question for you so okay. yeah so let's talk about when um anxious animals come to see you as a veterinarian so what are some recommendations that you can give pet parents, whether it be like the night before their visit for a wellness visit, let's just say, like, you know that they're going to be a little anxious, whether it's a dog or a cat. What are some tips that you would give to some pet parents out there? Well, you know, we, we do coming to a stressful place, you're trying to desensitize them. So you try to bring them as often as you can and give them, give them treats. So we have, our, we have a behavior set works here and she has really kind of, revamp the way we've we see our uh you know our patients and it's it's all with desensitization uh with with treats so we have a whole treat cart and so giving them something positive when when they're experiencing something that makes them anxious it can help you know kind of desensitize them and, and yeah so that's really that's really the kind of one of the tricks some dogs are just you know too anxious and they may need some medication and, and so we are a big advocate to, you know, 
keep them calm so that it doesn't make, you know, make them worse each time they come in. So right. giving medications like trazodone and gabapentin, those, those medications are common, commonly used for anxiety, you know, coming into the hospital. We use them often for, you know, pre, pre-surgeries and things like that. But uh, you know, for, for visits, it can make a world of difference. Some dogs that, you know, just don't like their nails to cut or, you know, hand body handling. But again, we try, um, often try just positive treats. Yeah. And that, that's what I love about, about your team there is that all about food, motivation, and uh, good experience. Yeah, Caitlin says, my dog's on trazodone and GABA for vet visits. Caitlin, so are mine, you know? <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with living through a little bit of chemistry. Yeah. Hi, Karina. Um, but yeah, there, there's nothing wrong with giving them a little something, something to take the edge off of them. And even for our cat parents, leaving the carrier out for the the, the days bef- a few days beforehand, yep. putting treats in there so that way it has a good experience or associating that. What I like about your reception area too, um, to those of you that have been there, Mount Laurel Animal Hospital, you know that it's separate. So there's exotics, there's an area for cats, there's an area for dogs. And that really helps minimize fear, anxiety, and stress on these guys. That's so, right. Yeah. That text PJ, what? Well, we got to say hello to them. Do you know who they are, Dr. Mankowski? I'm not sure. Oh. I don't know. Well, well, they only have like 2 million followers or so on, on TikTok. So, oh, wow. Less, so, yeah, they're wonderful. Oh, my gosh. I see a lot of my, my fam, my TikTok fam's coming in. <laughs> uh, yeah, COVID, COVID was a big, you know, people getting dogs with co. you know, when, when the pandemic is here and they, they just couldn't socialize pets enough. So, we're seeing a lot of anxious dogs that were, um, you know, related to the gift. pandemic. Thank you for oh, somebody gift. gave us a gift. Yeah, yeah, Conchita. Oh. She's awesome. <laughs> Conchita, thank you for the heart. Yes. Very nice. So wait, is this your first time doing a live, by the way, Dr. Yes. Mankowski? Yes. Okay, everybody do, I don't do, do I me don't a favor, everybody. Speaking. Do me a favor. Send Dr. Mankowski a rose. Everyone, they know what we're talking about, Sue. So send, send them a rose, and that way... <laughs> <laughs> just send me one. Yeah, I just sent you one. There you go. See, thank you, Conchita. There we go. Oh, man, you're going to get a dozen <laughs> roses. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you for the gifts. <laughs> what else do we have here? Yeah. So, uh, Jess is saying that her dachshund's got a lot of anxiety from quarantine. Do you want me to, um, I could just add to that, is like, yeah, I, I'm sure you've seen it too, Dr. Mikowski, with the post-anxiety, uh, post-COVID or whatever we're in right now from quarantine, We've seen that a little bit more because they've been closer to their animals more so than ever. So taking them away. And so it's really important to try to socialize them as best as you can. So. Also, you know, if you've been home with them all the time, you want to you want to try, you know, small, small uh, periods of, of time that you're away from them. So give them treats, walk out of the room, walk out of the house and, you know, right. come um, and just make like it's no big deal uh, and, you know, continue to give them treats so that like separation anxiety can be a big, big problem. You know? Yeah, that, that is a big deal. Here's a good example. I'll show you is like, this is a big trigger. How many of you have to see they're barking around. How oh. many of you do this? You yeah. take the keys and you're about to leave for the day and they know. And all of a sudden like, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, you know, you just get up and leave. It's well, training you more so than the animal. Yeah. So also when you come home, you know, try not to make a big, big deal about coming home. I know you want to, you want to really make a big deal about uh, seeing them for, you know, for, for however long you were gone for, but some treats and, and um, you know, just work with them. Try to, (laughs) right. How how can I um, stop my golden doodle puppy from on my elderly dachshund? Uh, That's like PJ. Thank you for the cake. Yeah, a whole bunch of goodies. Yeah, so I guess uh, you have a larger dog, and and they're sitting on your elderly dachshund. So um, it's it's just that's probably a training, you know, a training thing to work with, you know, to place on an area. So I work with a, a trainer, and, you know, to try to use treat and learn commands. So that's a good question. Um, it is a good one. Um, so, uh, cat daddy, cat daddy, what's going on, cat daddy? Uh, my cat's when the carrier comes out and it's hide and seek. Yeah. 
that's fine. How many calls have we gotten as veterinarians when they say, I'm sorry, Dr. McKelsey, my appointment's running late because oh, thank I can't you. get the cat. Oh. Right? Yeah. I can't I can't get the cat in the carrier. So um yeah, so you're not alone there, Cat Daddy. That's certainly a big thing. Um, but also, uh, Dr. Mankowski, you've got to give a shout out to some vet techs that are in the room. Uh, vet Tech Week is coming up. So tell everybody a little bit about what that means. Well, it's a, it's a whole week of you know, celebrating what vet techs do. And, you know, we'll do that as a, as a business for um, our, you know, our staff and just, just the vet techs, you know, across the country, across the world. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, veterinary technicians, assistants. We even call them techceptionists because sometimes they'll be in a receptionist role or whatnot. So yeah, um, we're going to make a, a whole a whole you know vet staff. Uh, yeah, we, not just not just the techs because the receptionists do an amazing job and all the support. Right. We have our marketing team here. I have uh, everybody's here for the same goal. They are for the same goal. Wait, everybody, I'm going to show you a picture of Dr. Minkowski and myself. Let me see if I can show you this. Hold on, everybody. Get ready for this. Let's see. Hold on. Can you see that? It's like 20 years ago. That is like 20 years ago, Dr. Minkowski. Yeah. That's that's you and me, you and I, with a horse. And, um, you know, just to show everybody, like, this guy hasn't changed. I feel like you're, like, you're you hang out with Tom Cruise or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there is a vet tech symposium that's happening. Um, Peter Carlos is saying from the vet tech PJ that's coming up too. So, see Conchita. Yeah, I'll be I'll be at the Atlantic City Vet Conference that week. Oh, that's uh, great. So part of the week anyway, and then we'll be yeah. back. I'm doing be there. That. Thanks. So I, I've known this guy so much, everyone. So I was at Rob's wedding. Rob was at my wedding. Um, we went to undergrad together. Tell everybody where you went to undergrad. Went to Rutgers University at Cook. Cook College or Cook Campus now they they changed the name but um, it was great great place to learn um, animal animal science we we learned and went to then went to vet school right after that so what was uh, what was Adam Christman like in undergrad oh, is he the same 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 kind of guy he is now um, great character uh, one you could a friend you could depend on and uh, very studious kind of always nervous about a test. I'm like, Adam, yeah. just slow down, just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're always on the go and, and you're still on the go. You're all over the, all over the country. Yes. I love it. No, but thank you so much. And so tell everybody where Mount Laurel Animal House was located for those. I know that I see some of my followers are here, so they're new to you. Oh, thank you, Conchita. You like our picture. Thank you. Yeah. She loves her picture. Love her. <laughs> So where yeah. where yeah? Anybody have any question? Any more questions? Pet questions? Well, where's Mount Laurel Animal Hospital located? Oh, we're in South Jersey, um, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Probably like twenty minutes uh, west, um, west or sorry, east of of the city. So not not far from Cherry Hill, Morristown. So oh, we got uh, somebody says her daughter works here. Awesome. We have over three hundred employees. So we have a. Uh, a big file of a large, large amount of staff here. Yeah. How many employees do you have there? Yeah. It's over 300, close to 300. Yeah. So oh, over, over 300, that's, which is incredible. So what are your thoughts on blue healers? Abby is asking. Yeah. Um, I, it's a, I think it's a high energy breed. Um, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Uh, oh gosh, so Hold good, Doctor Christman. Well, uh, so yeah, they're a very intelligent breed, the Blue Healers. They're in my top five, by the way, of sportiest dog breeds. So if you watch my TikTok videos, you'll see that I have that. So it's always fun. Uh, that sex PJ, you got to come, and I'll even take you to Doctor Mikowski's practice. We'll visit when he comes in New Jersey because uh, they're in California right now. So you okay. have to. Uh, yeah, come you got to come by the practice. We'll give you a tour. Yeah. Uh, um, a large farm where we, uh, we have a home to many, many animals. I see somebody has, my dog has an allergy, I think, to fleas. He's covered in weeping sores and itchy too. Best shampoo. Well, he may need a, he may need an antibiotic. I just saw a pet that was just 
um, just adopted and had, has a lot of hair loss and things like that. Just a dog, we use a Duoxo Chlorohex shampoo for him. Um, and, and likely, and I put him also on an oral antibiotic. So, cause there's a, a infection. He also had, she also had, um, an ear infection. So needs some medication. So if your pet has it, you think an allergy, talk, go talk to your vet. So I definitely bring them in a good, you know, flea products are out there. Really good flea products these days are out there. Um, work on cleaning your environment. So, um, you know, the sores shampoo is one thing to use, but you, you definitely want to get them to your vet to, to take a look and see if there's any deeper like skin infections or, or. Infection. Yeah. Nicely, nicely done. So uh, thoughts on German Shepherds. So the German Shepherds are in my top five many lists for um, they're one of the most intelligent dog breeds around, as you all know. I mean, seeing eye uses them, police, working dogs, highly, highly intelligent. And um, I think they're wonderful. <laughs> I really do. I absolutely love them. Um, I'll go back and ask you a question, Dr. Minkowski. Disney Attic 73 is in the house. Good to oh, see you. for uh, loving our farm. Lots yes. of different animals. Hundreds What's your of, favorite breed of dog? Disney Addict is asking. I see. Um, I love I love the Beagle, um, but I also now have a Black Mouth Cur, and she's awesome. I also have a Poodle mix and like a miniature Pincher mix breed. So um, Beagles have been kind of my uh, special uh, special breed that I really love. Uh, and I just want to add on to that too, because we grew up with beagles, both you and I. And so that's, was kind of like our mutual friendship that we've had for one another is that, um, I, I knew Dr. Mankowski's beagle growing up. He knew mine. <laughs> and, um, so we had beagles growing up too. And I had one named Charlie and then pivoted over to the dachshunds. So, yeah. Somebody's asked, um, Lulu's asking, uh, do you guys ever work? free on uh, strays or do international work and we work with a ton of rescues i think how many over um 200. over 200 rescues in, in new jersey and so we do a, a tremendous amount of work significant discounts and some free work we work with um, the police dogs and we actually sent some veterinarians to thailand recently to do to do spay neuters out there nice houses um uh one, I, I really like the Schnauzer breed. Um, they, I, I think, what do you think first with me? What do you think of Schnauzers, Dr. Chris? I love the Schnauzers because they look like wire hair dachshunds to me. Yeah. You know, any of the dogs with the beards, like the yeah. German wire hair pointers, like Schnauzers, I just love I them. They are. Beard, is that why? Right. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they give you those wet kisses. They kind of. Yeah. Just yeah. Just the only thing I always tell about the, the Schnauzers is you got to watch your pancreatitis. Yeah. They, yep. they, 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 they can have, um, uh, you know, endocrine diseases. They, you know, when they right. get older, they will get diabetes and things like that. So keep them slim. They, they, they often will have dental disease. So you want to keep up with their dental cleanings and, or, you know, oral care at home. So, right. um, same thing with the Havanese. That's a small, that's a small breed, great breed, real sweet. Let me... Um, somebody just rec rescued a point. Uh, I don't know if that's a pointer puppy. Pointer. So that's all. Vet Text PJ that's has right. a great question. I want to ask you too. So, because yeah. he, he, I know your practice, Vet Text PJ, is is a big one, but he's trying to fit you. Like you have three hundred employees. So tell us a little bit more about like the the design, the the structure of Mount Laurel. Also, how many doctors are there? GPs, and then you also have specialists, right? So what does that mean to people who don't know that? So the hospital, um, we have a twenty four hour emergency. Uh, facility and so that is operating at all times we also have uh, so that that right now there's about four or five doctors just seeing ER patients right now and maybe 10 to 15 staff um, we also have specialist surgeons who would pick up cases from the emergency uh, crew you know during the day or they're on call even at night um, so we have specialists which include again this is a board board certified veterinarians who after four years of vet school they, they they go on and and are become specialties or a, a specialist in their specialty right. so cardiology uh, surgery internal medicine behavior uh, all of those are here right so how many and doctors I, roughly are there then overall have over 50 over so 50 doctors. you hear that vet text pj over <laughs> over 50 doctors Isn't that crazy yeah. 
Wait, I'm going to do a TikTok thing for you, Dr. Mikowski. Enjoy this for a second. Those of you that are joining us, welcome to the live stream. This is Dr. Mikowski from Mount Laurel Animal Hospital. And I need you to do me all a favor is to go ahead at the very top of that screen is to hit that follow button for Mount Laurel Animal Hospital and double tap that screen and send them some love for all the hard work that they do. So uh, do that Jack. right now. <laughs> Carry on. All right. I see somebody said, hey, what do you think about torties uh, and uh, tortitude? Is that a real thing? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, similar to calico cats, I'd say they can be sometimes have to be a little feisty to work with those those cats um, when they nervous especially when they get nervous um and and you know sometimes and that's where we'd say hey maybe a little anti-anxiety medication to come into the hospital some some cats you just can't touch and with a little bit of gabapentin um you can work with them so it's it's kind of amazing um you know some people like that attitude and uh <laughs> the cat. let's see I'm trying to scroll through the question. wait i got dad jokes for you Oh boy. Yeah. I, you know, I'm a dad and I, I, I like that ad jokes. Go ahead. I know. So what did the drummer name her triplets? So what? Anna one, Anna two, Anna one, two, three. <laughs> I got to have these ready for me. Um, oh, Zeus is the goodest boy. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Summercorn. I'll tell her that, that you, um, that you send your love. So thank you so much. And I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> that's a tough thing yeah we see uh yes that we have to help a lot of a lot of folks with their pets um you know to, uh, um, to say goodbye so that's a big part of a veterinarian's job is right is to be there for you know when end of life care yeah lots absolutely. of faulty poo great breed love them um they can they have a lot of they can have a lot of dental issues. Any small breed dogs, they can have a lot of dental issues that, you know, you want to keep up with their their, their oral hygiene and dental, yes. you know, at least every year or two, um, you know, throughout their life. That's important. Yeah. Try to save think, teeth. Yes, but but they're a pretty healthy dog otherwise. Um, um, I know my my aunt's dog. She just came in and and she has a little uh, Maltese and he has. Um, back problems so he has yeah. disease and yeah. i know you know this disease that's a common problem with dachshunds yeah okay and, thank and, you and for beagles too right okay it says clark yep. Dever griswold the tiktok star oh yes he is <laughs> <laughs> what will he choose next going down the ramp i know right uh, um okay. thank you for the rose yes you're welcome uh I want, to add, of, I want to give you one more dad joke. You got another one? Of course I do, Rob. You know I do, you know. No, well, they I guess, you know, I wonder what do you cross an elephant with a rhinoceros? Elephant I know. <laughs> Good. <laughs> this guy, son of a gun. Uh so <laughs> you know, talk hey, about our CPR video on our TikTok channel? No, I didn't see it. I got to see it. Over 1.5 million views. I know you. Oh my gosh! It's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you very awesome. much. I didn't. I didn't record it, but uh, my wonderful staff did. And, and yeah, well, you have, have a wonderful team that's there, and you guys are. I think it's. I, I just want to mention one thing. As a TikTok, whatever veterinarian. To see a veterinary hospital be here on TikTok to provide content that's fun, uplifting, and educational. This is where it's at, you guys. It really is. I mean, you all are looking for this kind of content, so you have to make sure that you hit that follow button and um, follow all the content from Mount Laurel Animal Hospital. They're, they're wonderful. They really are. So uh, let me ask you a question. I go back and forth. See what we're doing here? We're riffing back and forth. Yeah. Because I'm taking the question. So uh, Pack Nurse is asking, any thoughts on acupuncture? I have a dachshund, and it's been suggested from friends. Yeah, I, I, acupuncture is a wonderful modality. We, you know, we do have it with our, our physical therapy um, service, and, and it, it can really help some patients and in a lot of different ways, not, not just you know, with disc injuries, but you know, stimulate appetite uh, just to make them feel better. So... You know, if that is that is kind of a more natural, um, you know, your pet can't have you know certain medications or um, right. 
yeah. you can definitely consider that. That's a great question. You're going to look for, there's not many vets that offer that, but um, they're out there. So physical, yeah. usually physical therapy. Um, I, I'm a big advocate rehab. for it, for, you know, post-op with the back dogs. I think Chelsea Connor had it. Carl had it after their surgeries for their backs. And I do think that they get the zoomies quicker from it. So, um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. I do want to mention one thing. I'll take this one question because it really is one of my biggest pet peeves. Everybody say the word with me. One, two, three. Veterinarian. It's not veterinarian. It's not veterinarian. It's veterinarian. And I see somebody asking that question. How do you say it? Pronounce it. So it's, <laughs> it's. Yeah, that's. that's a, uh, it's a tough word, but it's, it's veter veterinarian. Holly golly, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it safe? Uh, to give daily hemp tablet to a four month old Aussie, I guess you're thinking of, you know, CBD oil and, 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 and helping them with anxiety and things like that. Um, we're starting to use it. There's, there hasn't been, is there a commercially, I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen it, but is there any commercially? So let me stop product? you for a second on this because just an FYI, everyone, TikTok does not allow us to talk about CBD or hemp. You'll get a, a, a banning from it. So, so just stop talking about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah so all i say is like chat with your veterinarian about that stuff yeah yeah i had to learn the hard way just so you know <laughs> uh oh we're gonna get shut down <laughs> we're gonna don't worry about down. it yes what uh, do you do if you know your shepherd has hip issues do you just continue on pain medications well i'll i'll start with this and i'd love to see your feedback on that so um so if they have hip issues you want to diagnose it as such so Definitely x-rays, of course, is important. Well, thanks and for then me. what do we do with that? Is it surgery or is it something that you could do with like multimodal approach? So shockwave therapy, laser therapy, acupuncture, and then of course medications and continue with like a glucosamine or hip and joint supplement that your veterinarian would recommend. What would you have to add into that? Yeah, I mean, uh, joint um, hip replacement is very rare. They will only pursue that in really severe cases. So you know, depends on how old your pet is. Um, they usually can uh, respond very well to, to, to medicine, physical therapy, you know, exercise, things that you can do at home. So, yeah. you know, especially, and often they'll get better. So if they have an injury or, or it seems really bad at at, at, at certain point and um, make sure you're talking to your vet about, you know, what's working, what doesn't seem to be working, right. and they'll help. You. So yeah. our medicine yeah he, he talked about a bunch of them there's NSAIDs there's glucosamine and droid and there's you know other nutraceuticals like fish oil and again uh, exercise restriction yeah. depends on and then somebody had said um, don't let the dachshunds on the couch Adam <laughs> I know it was a dad joke they said because they couldn't go to therapy it's a good one. oh boy okay yeah I um, need help do with a seven month old kitten they're probably climbing all over the place and biting you and, and everything like that. Um, and, and some of those like bottle fed kittens, they can be really, um, you know, they didn't learn certain cues, you know, from their, from their litter mates. So if kittens are taken away from their litter mates at a young age and don't learn certain social, social interactions uh, from their litter mates, then they can be, they can have more behavioral problems. Yeah. So they want to talk to a behaviorist. Um, I'm not sure what you're dealing with, with the kitten, if it's normal stuff, but if you want them to stop attacking, you teach them something to attack, you know, have a, have a, a stuffed animal on a, a stick with a string and, you know, kind of encourage them to go after that. Don't allow them to, to play with your hands and, and attack your hands. That's, that's not good. <laughs> no, not good. Okay. I want to mend, I want to answer this one question, Dr. Minkowski, and I'm going to stand up from the rooftops and shout it out. So Liz Williams, thank you for your question. It's a great one. How old is too old on a dog to get spayed and neutered? And the answer is never. <laughs> They're never too old to get spayed and neutered because you never want that to turn into anything. So for the boys, we worry about prostatic disease, testicular cancers. And on the girls, we worry about something called pyometra, which is like an infection in the uterus and it turns into an emergency yep. surgery. It's disgusting. And of course, the other ones too, ma breast, mammary tumors, and so forth. So, um, you know, it's always good to have a, a physical exam, blood work, make sure everything's good for them to go under general anesthesia to have that procedure done. But um, I, I, I'm sure you agree with me, Dr. Mikowski, but I, I yeah. would say never, 
at any age, really, to do it. I have a good friend whose dog right now is in the hospital. He's having difficulty urinating, and he has an enlarged prostate, and he's he's an intact male. So, you know, for different reasons. Now, this dog has heart disease, so they kind of didn't want to do the procedure, but now they're kind of forced to do it. Right. So he's castrated at, at nine years old. And as yeah. far as females and their spaying, yeah, no, that's that's just that's a that's a an infection waiting to happen. I right. Think percentage is something around 50% that they will sometime in their lifetime have an infection in the uterus. So you want to get uh, the female spayed for sure. That's right. To avoid a major emergency. We see them, we see them every week here, uh, Uh, infections. So very, very important to get that. Um, So I have to get to an appointment, Adam, Dr. Christmas. Okay. Well, let's just end on this dad joke that Oki just dropped. Why did the cowboy get a dachshund? He had to get a long little doggy. Get a long little doggy. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us here. TikTok Live, like our TikTok channel. Come visit our website. Come visit our hospital. Come see our farm. Thank you so much for joining me, Dr. Chrisman. It's it's uh, always a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Always. Much love, brother. I love you guys at Mount Laurel. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks.